This is coming along really good. I want to show you this. This is sow thistle. This is a weed. This was growing in here after the watermelon, of course, died back. This is why you don't want weeds. This is my kind of day. We are going to hit, they said, 90 degrees. And I've been working in my chair garden. And I decided to sit back for a few moments and chit chat with you. Because there's things that are kind of disturbing to me. And I want to talk about it, especially for beginner gardeners or gardeners that have been having issues. Let's walk over here for a minute and we'll sit back down. I am tearing apart the chair guard. Now, I could have just gone right on top and just did it that way, but here's the thing. I haven't done it in three years. This will be the third season. And when you kind of tear it apart a little bit, you don't have to tear everything apart. Around the drainage holes, when you refill it with leaves and matter, which I'm doing, I see I'm picking weeds and stuffing it in there. And if I've got kitchen scraps, I put that in there. Don't worry if you've just got leaves, but make sure they're kind of green and brown, not all brown. All brown, eh, it's not really gonna work that good. So you wanna mix it up a little bit. What I wanna talk about is this, look at this. I want you to see this. Do you see this? I don't know if you can see that. That is roots. That actually came off a of celery. See the celery in there? Looks harmless, doesn't it? It's not. It's not harmless. I want to talk about how you can grow and be successful. I want you to grow something. I know I've brought this up. I'm starting to sound like I'm preaching to you, but I'm not. Here's the thing. Let me sit down. It's so beautiful. Drink my ice water. Talk a little bit and then get back to work. Because I'm almost done. I'm almost done with the chair garden. I've got so many other gardens to do. Number one, Gary and I are not selling anything. So keep that in mind. I'm not selling a product. I'm not trying to promote anything. I started all this actually, what, five years ago, six years ago, for Gary's family. As Gary was bringing in the wood chips, I'd come out here and I was videotaping or you know, recording him so his family would see he's alive and well because they're all in Australia. And then everybody started to get an interest. All of a sudden, how do you do that? Because they saw me doing things. They were taught the opposite. And they go, how are you doing that? You can't do it. You can't grow in fresh matter that you're putting in a container. Um, well, let's take a look. And I showed them that in my containers, I had seeds growing in rotting food. All right? Well, what do you think nature does? It drops the fruit, it rots, it opens up. If it's, a, let's say, if it's a melon or a watermelon, a critter didn't get it, it will rot and open up, and then the seeds will grow. Now, the strongest in nature will survive. You may have 100 seeds come up, but you'll have insects and stuff eating most of them, and then the strongest will take off and grow. I do a lot of container gardening due to the trees, all right? So we've got all these trees around, and some trees are not that bad, but some trees are really destructive. When it comes to growing a garden, eh, your nectarine tree is not going to bother much. Your apple trees even won't bother much. But trees like this, this, this is the California pepper tree, Brazilian pepper trees, any type of pine tree. There's multiple trees, sometimes even laurel sumac. What they do, and that's a native tree up there, right in the middle, that's laurel sumac. I I think that's one there, but I'm not sure, but I know there's one up there. They have a massive root system. They were designed to hunt out water because the area is drier and they need water to survive. So they'll take it from anywhere, be it a container that you're growing on the ground or especially a raised bed that you put on the ground with an open bottom that they can get a hair through. If you've got a hole in a container, let's say a raised bed and you've got one hole, the roots of these trees are hair like and all it has to do is get one hair in there and it will expand and turn into a full root system you'll go wait the hole was so small yeah well that's what these trees are designed to do well there's a lot of vegetables that we're growing that do the same thing and what's kind of bothering me is i'm watching a lot of well-known gardeners some which i watch and respect are coming up and they're doing videos I'm not going to say just to do a video. I'm not sure what they're doing. I don't know if it's just to do a video or what that's all about. But I look at what they do 
and think, well, how's that go for you? How'd it turn out? You have any results? Because I know for a fact that some of these beds they're setting up, these raised beds will not work. I'm going to be blunt. I don't usually say that, but it will not work. I don't want to say who they are. It's not important, but what they're planting will not work. Let's get that really strong there. They're setting themselves up for failure, but they don't care. I never see them come back with results, at least not with what they made the video with. The reason I'm saying this on that is some of them are selling products and they want you to buy their products. And some of them are not selling products. What they're doing is they're selling their video. They're simply wanting you to watch their video. They want you to, they even want you, some of them to say, hey, that's not gonna work. You know, like some of these people that are growing watermelons on their terrace and if you really look at the photo, you'll see it's been photoshopped and each container has a full-size watermelon and the containers are only one gallon. It's all fake. They tear it apart and they redo it later. Let's go back to the container gardening. I have to do container gardening for me to be successful. I do plant some stuff in the ground. My meadow over there is doing quite well in the ground, but I do have to water it well. We are normally in a drought situation. We've had a lot of rain this past six months, but normally the plants around here are searching for water. So growing in the ground where we are can be difficult. I'm not saying impossible, if you're growing quick vegetables, you can dig a hole, you can compost the dickens out of it, plant your vegetables and everything will be fine because they're not going to last. But you know, a lot of my broccoli have lasted four years. Uh, brassicas have lasted four or five years. You know, my tree collards, collard, kale, even some of the Swiss chard has gone into its second and third year. And if their root system has competition with some of these trees, then they won't make it. And that's the thing, it struggles. You'll, let's go back to when I was talking about what I'm watching. I'm seeing some of these people, I, I don't even wanna call them gardeners, but let's just say I'm seeing some of these people show you how to set up a container garden or set up a raised bed. And there's nothing wrong with that, you can do it, but it's the way they're doing it. I would love to see it in three months, not next month, because in one month, it's gonna look beautiful. They put in a zucchini, they put in a cucumber, they put in a tomato, they put in a pepper, then they add in herbs and they've got this beautiful raised bed with all this stuff. And it's not that big the raised bed, that's the problem. We're not talking about an eight by four, we're probably talking about something that's two feet wide by four feet. It's gonna look fabulous next month. The zucchini is going to be big and beautiful, the leaves, and the tomato is going to take off up into the air. The cucumber is going to wind around and start growing cucumbers, and some of them throw melons in there. You know, the melons are going to grow, and the herbs are going to spread out. And it's going to look fabulous, and they're going to go, wow. They may even come back and show their video. Look, everything is so green and beautiful. Mm hmm Okay. Now let's come back in 60 days. You're supposed to be harvesting squash. Your tomatoes should be growing lots of tomatoes. The cucumbers should start growing in two months. Cucumbers all over. Everything they put in there should start having all this stuff. They don't come back. No, they can't come back. Because by the time those plants are at their maturity to start to throw fruit, the fighting in that root system is going to be unbelievable and the strongest will survive. I don't know if it'll be the zucchini. I don't know if it'll be the tomato. The cucumbers really seem to struggle, so I doubt the cucumber would be the one, though you never know. But what happens is everything fizzles out. And some of you have come to me and you've said, I planted up my containers my raised beds and my squash died, my tomatoes died. They, they never produced anything, they suddenly died. Well, they had no more space for their roots is what it is. I don't care if you're growing in a container, a plastic container, a large raised bed, or you know, a tote or a grow bag. I mean, some people say, oh, they root prune. Yeah, they do, but they turn their roots around inside and they grow more and more roots and you become root bound. It doesn't work. That's not the way nature was set up, so it doesn't work. 
because you're protecting your plant. You're not allowing something to come in there and eat the weakest plants. So let's say the zucchini takes off. Well, then you should be allowing the snails and, and the roly polies and, and critters to come in and eat the rest of the plants. So the only one left in there is the zucchini. I'm using that as an example. Nature steps in and takes over and eliminates the weakest. We don't allow that because we're protecting our plants with tool and everything. And that's fine and hunky dory, but it's not going to grow. So you end up usually with nothing is what you usually end up with. I have no products for sale. I'm not trying to sell you something. I'm not trying to even sell you totes. I have nothing to do with Walmart. Some of you have come in and said, oh, you must be a sponsor for Walmart. They locked me in the store and couldn't care less. You probably saw that video. They know. They, you know what they said? We're sorry. That was it. Locked in that store for 30 minutes. Couldn't get out. Nobody cared. I have nothing to do with them. But during the pandemic, I signed up to get their groceries and it's been helpful. And I do still get their groceries, right? Why? I save hours. I don't have to drive to any store in town to go shopping for things. I can order everything online. I pay what, it, I think it's $110. I don't know what it is a year. And you get all your groceries for free. I can't complain about that. I want to be home and see what you see. I want to look around and see how beautiful everything is and work in my garden. I'm pulling out the stakes and it gives me time to do all this. Otherwise, I literally, till you go into town, it'll take 15, 20 minutes till you get parked, till you get into the store, till you look around, till you stand in line. I don't have to do that. So I have nothing to do with Walmart. Go to Amazon. I, I buy once in a while, you know, stuff on Amazon, but I mainly do use eBay and of course Walmart. And then of course I do go to thrift stores and stuff. I haven't even really been in grocery stores this year. There's only one or two I've gone to. What I want you to do is think. I want you to set up with, let's say you're gonna use an 18 gallon tote and you could use 30, but I'm gonna stick with 18 and I think you'll understand why when I talk about this. This is for beginners. You guys that are having wonderful luck, don't listen to me. Shut this off, go do something else. A zucchini, if you want it to be su successful, should have its very own bedroom, its very own house. One zucchini. I'll show you something. Let's take a walk while I talk about this. They get a big root system. They have to pull up a massive amount of water. Why? Think of their, their leaves, how big they are when they grow correctly. These are not growing correctly. So they set up this root system, they can pull water up and on very hot days, they look like this, but their roots are holding the water. And then at the end of the day, they put the water back into the plants. Look at this. Do you see what's come up here? I didn't plant this. I had a zucchini in here or some sort of squash. It would be a zucchini hybrid. It's from the garden growing and I composted it and it's all growing. Now look at the size. If you watch my videos on lettuce, it's the same thing. See how small they are and they're trying to produce, but yet no fruit is coming from these. Do I have anything on there growing fruit? No, those are just leaves. They won't grow. They will not grow. In that situation, they won't grow. You come back here in about two weeks and this thing's going to be massive. This is one zucchini. I have a rock here. Why do I have a rock? See the moisture there? It's wet. I keep a rock by the new plants. You can use even a big chunk of wood and it will hold water. So even as today's going to be, you know, 90 degrees, it will always have water under that rock. It'll have water under this container. There's nothing planted in there. I bought a zucchini plant, four of them in a little container and they're doing fine. This is normal because we are close to 90. This plant is going to be massive. Those have been in there for over a month and they're not growing. They're stunted. They're all fighting for space. They all want to set their roots in there. So none of those are going to grow. None of them. And nothing took them out. So this is what they're going to do. And then even if I separated them, some may grow, but because they're stunted, they may not. These people that are showing you how to take one raised bed and plant everything in it is setting you up for disappointment. Now you may end up telling me, oh, you've done it and it works. How much fertilizer did you use? How much product did you buy? I don't buy any product. The only product that I buy is I go and get usually miracle Grow. I have nothing to do with them. And the reason I get them 
They have the cheapest price for the potting soil and I've never had an issue with that. And it works. I use that on the top only. Let me take a drink of water. I just have some water here. Dry out here. <laughs> I use that when I'm planting my new seedlings. I planted some in here now. Only because if I bought them, they were growing in some sort of potting mix, so I want them to start, you know, so they don't go too much in shock. And then in a matter of days, they'll pop up, and the rest of it is all the stuff I put in from around the yard. You've seen, you know how I do that. See, they're drooping again. This is okay, but I've got a lot of layering going on. See the rock? See this? This is celery. I have to keep an eye on that. We're going to talk about that in a second. There's the other zucchini. So I'm going through all these. I'm going to do watermelon in here and different things. So I'm not going to be planting all of it up. The Swiss chard's going. The point is, if you want to set yourself up for success, do containers. If you're doing container gardening, if you're doing raised bed, be very careful. If you can separate the plants, give them distance. A good amount of distance then you should do okay unless you want to buy tons of fertilizer I have heard some of the bigger gardeners say I was surprised it doesn't matter what you get it doesn't matter if it's synthetic or natural they're all the same yeah <laughs> okay I'm not saying not to buy it there's nothing wrong with it if you want to buy fertilizer you can like I said we don't the only thing I get is some potting soil literally use a handful there might be one cup in each of these, maybe two, and that's it. So I can buy one bag and it's gonna get me through this, it's gonna get me through the rainbow garden, it will get me through different things. Unless I wanna grow flowers or something fancy, then I might put it in a little pot. I start my seedlings generally with potting soil. Off topic for a second, hot dogs. A lot of people won't eat hot dogs for multiple reasons, but a big thing, like a lot of your lunch meats, have nitrates, okay? Nitrates are not good for us. Let's just get down to that. They're not good. So what did they do? They came up with natural. No nitrates added. Have you seen that on some of these products? No nitrates added. I'm going to repeat that. Now, go read what it says in the ingredients. You will find something called... I'm not, I don't have it in front of me offhand, but celery extract. It might even have a fancier name than that. They can call it natural, and they can say it's not nitrates, but it is a nitrate that is developed out of celery. So it's the same thing. They've made a chemical. They've transferred it into a chemical compound, but they can somehow get away by telling you there's no nitrates and no, it is nitrates. And sometimes I have heard, now this I'm not 100% on, but I've read that sometimes it could be worse than the regular nitrates that they add in and they know how much they're adding in. This they have no measurement on. So no nitrates, okay. Going back to the fertilizer, synthetic versus natural, it's still it's still basically synthetic. It's not, it, it, there is a difference between the two. So I, I don't want to go into all that. If you want to buy a lot of plant fertilizer, go ahead. Compost tea, I make that on my own with weeds and different things around here. You can use stinging nettles. You can use, I love tree collard for compost tea. But what I'm saying is if you pack the plants up with too many plants that have large roots, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. This is why I love, again, I'm not selling them. I'm not trying to sell you 18 gallon totes. It's perfect. Look how small they are. Small enough to go on a chair. One chair, you can put them on the ground, wherever you want to put them. Use five gallon buckets if you want. But the point is you can get a lot even out of a five gallon bucket because there's no competition in there. You put one squash, one tomato, not together, either or, one cucumber, let them have their own space and you will be surprised as to how much you can grow. That's why when you go smaller, smaller can be better because each one's got their own space. Instead of getting a great big tote, I can get 30 gallon totes, they even sell them 45. But then what am I going to put in there? One squash? It doesn't need more than 18 gallons. It doesn't even need the 18 gallons. 
you've got to analyze what these people are doing and step back and look around. I know you're saying, well, look at all the plants that grow around here. Yeah, but again, they can send their roots way, way down. They can send their roots anywhere. They can stay away and some plants kill other plants. So keep that in mind. Got some trees struggling up there. Why? Probably because of the pepper tree. If you set yourself up for gardening for the first time, do it both ways if you've got room. Set one up with all those different plants in there and then set a couple up with your favorite plants. Maybe one tomato plant in one, maybe one zucchini in another, maybe one cucumber in another, maybe one pepper. You know, you can get away with pepper. Look at the hummingbird. You can get away with pepper sometimes if you lift them. I don't know if I, I do have lifted here. I'll show you how to do that. If you lift the plants and give them their own space, you can do that too. It's called layering. Layering does work. That's not what they're doing. They're not layering. They're literally putting these plants side by side. So if you think about some of the plants that have a massive root system. Oh, look on the geranium. He's checking out the geranium. Oh, he's sitting on my wheelbarrow. Look at, oh, it took off. I, I, I'm a sucker for hummingbirds. I'm a sucker for all animals. If you set yourself up like that and you start noticing what will work, I think you're going to garden longer. I think you're going to be more excited. I think you will experiment. And again, going back because I lost track of what I was saying, think about the ones that have massive root systems. Keep celery out of your containers. Give it its own bucket, its own tote or whatever you want to do. Celery gets the biggest root system and it takes over everything. And when you go to take it apart or refurbish it, my goodness, it looks like a web. A web of, you know, just yarn and string and everything. Zucchini, all squash have a massive root system. Melons have a massive root system. Tomatoes get a massive root system. Watermelon, pretty much I would definitely want to have not too many. I will say, you did see last year, I pushed three watermelon plants in one 18-gallon tote and got plenty of watermelon from each plant. So their root system wasn't that big, but that means layering. I put a bucket on top. I watered that bucket with a plant all the time. It was a two gallon bucket and I kept enough water in there and they did well. So you can get away with watermelon, but think about the squash. Think about the tomatoes. Cucumbers actually, I think would do better on their own too. Even if you want to get big Swiss chard, Put one Swiss chard, one plant in its own container. I've got one over there sitting there, that great big one against the wall. If you put one Swiss chard in there, your, your Swiss chard will have elephant ears on it. It will get so big. If you put multiple ones in there, they'll be small. Try it different ways and see what works for you. Gary, like I said, uses nothing. He doesn't buy anything. He doesn't use not one smidge of potting soil in his garden. Nothing. It all is soil he made by piling up leaves and different things that he's making and using those leaves with soil from his yard there. He uses native soil as well. He doesn't want to use potting soil. I want to use potting soil and we've garden a little different. He's not thrilled about growing in totes, but he found out it works because there's trees down there. He planted all those Brazilian pepper trees and they took over. They have a massive root system. I want you to try things that are going to work. I don't care what you grow in. If you can grow in a grow bag that's woven of a plastic cloth and it works for you, fine. That must mean you don't dry out like we do. We're going to be hot and dry and we're going to continue to start being hot and dry. It doesn't work for me. What works for me are buckets or totes. The plastic is safe. I've got a whole video on that. You can go look that up if you are, you're interested. It would have to reach 150 plus degrees for any plastic to even leach. And the science has now come out that plants do not pull that up in their roots. In fact, all these people that were stressing over lead in their soil found out now that the kids were never getting lead from the plants. Plants cannot pull certain things up. They're microscopic. They can't pull that up. Certain plants like carrots, radishes, beets, root plants, can sometimes pull some of the lead to their roots, but not into the part that you eat. Wash the roots off, you're fine. The kids that were actually getting lead was, were getting it from playing out in the yard and they were getting it in their mouth. Well, hey, what about the fish in the ocean? Uh, 
Yeah, they get plastic and stuff in their mouth. Think of how big their mouth is. We're talking about nothing that can get up into a plant where fish that have a big mouth and they are swallowing the plastic and items like that. That's different. We could do the same thing, but not plants. Don't worry about plants. Don't worry about plastic. Think about how you're setting it up. And if you are adamant in setting up a small bed with all those plants, go ahead and do it. But do me a favor. Set up a bucket on the side, something cheap. You can go to Walmart or you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and pick up a bucket for $4. Put some soil in there. Make your soil. Don't, don't use a lot of soil. Get some weeds and leaves and go to the park and rake that up. Be careful with lawn clippings because if they're treating their lawns with herbicides, you won't be able to grow a thing. Get something that you know is not being treated and then put a little bit of potting soil on top and grow a squash in a single bucket. I think it's going to surprise you that how good of a gardener you really are when you get it right and you're told the right way. So I think it's good if I go back to work, get my stuff done. I am not saying it's not going to work 100%. Depends on how much effort and fertilizer and what you're going to put into it. But again, I don't fertilize. I make my own compost tea periodically. There's times I forget and my plants continue to thrive. And I want you to be happy and successful. I want you to eat that tomato off your plant. Get some cherry tomatoes. They grow quicker. I want you to eat some squash or zucchini or melons or greens if you're going for greens. Now, let's real quick. I love John Kohler growing your greens on YouTube. Yes, he plants a lot of stuff really close together in raised beds. But you know what he's doing? He's harvesting the whole thing. He goes through after a month or so and takes everything out, eats it all, because he's doing a lot of greens, or even small brassicas. And then he starts over. That's fine. But if you've got plants that have to grow to a certain size, like squash and tomatoes, to produce, he doesn't do tomatoes. I don't think he does squash either. Then you need to give them space. You need to be able to watch your plants grow and be able to spread their wings underground. And when they can do that, you will get squash. You will get fantastic fruit. So take what I said with a grain of salt. Do it your way. And if you haven't had success your way and you did it the other way, then try it my way and let me know what you think. I've got a single sage plant in there with layered with onions. I did tell you I was gonna show you layers. And this is doing fantastic for what now? It's going on its third year, because it's got the whole thing. The only other thing in there is the onions sitting there layered for what? So I can water it in there and there'll be water underneath. And I'm going to be layering in here. I do have celery, and I'm warning you on celery, I shouldn't be doing it, but I will periodically lift this. This tomato plant should not be in here with my squash. I may remove the squash and leave the tomato plant. I wasn't sure if it would move because I had it somewhere else. It was actually growing in there. It was growing in my container that was in there, my pitcher. And I felt sorry for it. I shouldn't do that because I messed myself up. But you know, if it takes off, I'll move that squash and I'll put it in one of these other totes because I want to set myself up good too. You know, sometimes I come through here and go, oh, this looks so cute. I'll put something else in here. No, you know, with next to it, it's not going to work because that's going to have a massive root system. I do have carrots in there. You can do some radishes around your plants. That's okay. You can do beans around your plants. That's okay. There are plants that you can put in there. You can put certain herbs. Be careful with mint because they get a massive root system. They will leave the bottom of your pot and create new plants underground. So keep that. Nobody, you know, in mind, nobody talks about that. I've heard them say, oh, go ahead and put a flower pot in your garden. Don't worry about the mint because the mint's in a flower pot. Uh-uh. They send a root through the bottom of the pot underground. Then they come back up and set all these new plants. So that doesn't work either. But certain herbs, you can do oregano. That would be perfect layering in your container. Onions, like walking onions, garlic chives. Be careful, garlic chives get a massive root system, but if it's in its own container, lift it once in a while to make sure that it won't set root in your raised bed or your containers. 
but I will tell you celery I do have to watch for. I'm actually composting most of that celery. I will give, be giving most of my celery for now on their own bucket. I don't think I'm going to devote an entire tote right now to them. I might do one because I don't need that much celery. A celery plant will grow for a whole year. And so what do I need to have a ton of them for? I use the outside on it. But, you know, keep that in mind. It's the massive root system that's going to kill the plant that you really want to grow. So ask questions. I hope I explained this right. Keep the weeds out because weeds, native weeds, even dandelion pulls a lot from your plants. You want to pull that out. You don't want to do that. You want to kind of not leave any weeds in there. Put a top dressing if you can. It could be grass clippings. I, I take a lot of the weeds there and chop them up. Leaves, you can do that. Sometimes I don't. I know I don't. You know what? It still works because I layer pots in there and the pots are doing the mulch for me. So keep that in mind. I just wanted you to know I'm not selling anything. I don't, I don't have t-shirts to sell you. I did make a t-shirt, but we're not going to go into that. I want you to garden. My goal is to get you to garden, especially I love when people come in and tell me, oh, I've never gardened before. I couldn't do it. I can do it. Well, I couldn't do it either. And a lot of people can't do it because they tried once. It didn't work and they walked away and they thought, well, I put too much money out. Some people fill their raised beds. I heard $350 plus. Oh my gosh. I would be frustrated too and be back at the grocery store buying all that food that's been irradiated and doesn't have vitamins, but it does have minerals. So ask questions. I just wanted to get that off my chest while I was working here and thinking, set up separately in whatever fashion you want, whatever type of containers you want, but kind of give your bigger plants with the massive root system their own container. And I think you're going to be so happy and so pleased when you start picking your fruits in the fall, especially the squash and pumpkins if you're growing and all those things, melons and cucumbers. Well, we should have cucumbers pretty soon. I have found even cabbage, one cabbage per pot. And I am now getting a lot of cabbage by just growing one cabbage plant. I have done three in a container, but I'll tell you something, three in an 18 gallon tote. I put one in a container that's about two gallons and they do much better. So a lot of plants do really good when they have their own container and you can designate how much water they get. You can layer in there, definitely put other pots in there and plant something else, but just make sure their root system isn't gonna take over. So with that, I am going back to work because I am determined to get this done within two days so I can start planting the seeds that are growing in my kitchen window. I gave you something to think about. Have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Well, I'm almost done. I've moved some stuff and I decided I better practice what I preach. Kidding around. I decided to take the tomato out from here because I do have my squash under there that I just planted and I put the tomato here in case it really does live. Might as well give it its own tote now since I don't have a lot of plants ready to go in here today. Might put another tomato in there and then pick the best. So now the tomato's separate. The zucchinis are separate. And layering is actually just putting pots on top of the soil, on top of the tote or your container, which creates a mulch because it will hold water underneath. And keep in mind, the pot that you put on top must have drain holes as well. So you water that top pot, it goes into your container, and then it will drain out of your tote if you're using a tote or a bucket.